Ron Davis is a professor of biochemistry and genetics at Stanford University. He's also director of the Stanford Genome Technology Center, director of the CFS Research Center at Stanford, and a member of the National Academy of Sciences and the Scientific Advisory Board Director of Open Medicine Foundation. And of course, Dr. Davis' son, as we saw in Jen's film, uh, has a severe Emmy. Ron, thanks so much for being with us. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. How is your son? I think he's getting uh, uh, a bit better because he's, uh, he's shifting his schedule to waking up earlier. Well, you, you just got a $5 million Bitcoin donation, right? For the Open Medicine Foundation, is that right? Uh, we, we received a substantial uh, number of donations recently, and uh, that's caused us a great deal of excitement. Um, and we're, not, we're now sort of planning what we're going, how we're going to use the money. We have to be very careful that we don't uh, Use the money on things that are are not necessarily going to pay off, uh, and so there's a lot of strategy planning. Uh, our our major major effort is to try to develop a, a biomarker, and we actually have four different ones that are showing great promise. Uh, one of them is something we call a nano needle. And uh, every CFS patient shows a positive signal in this assay, and none of the healthy controls do. So that's a better marker so far than been seen, uh, I think, in any other system. Uh, we have three others that we're also pursuing. They're a little, uh, we have less, less data on that. Uh, from a researcher's perspective, can you tell us what you think is happening in many of the the folks who have that mean, what are you seeing physically that's going on? How are you describing it? Well, I, I, I think it's a uh, systemic disease. And we certainly see uh, a lot of hypometabolic reaction, that is, uh, a large number of the metabolites are, are low. And, and Robert Navio has done an excellent job. Uh, we've also looked at uh, the metabolites and we we concur with what Robert Navio sees. Uh, a lot of the lipids are affected in this disease, and that's something that we're now pursuing pretty heavily. Uh, we also see a, a large number of mutations that are probably affecting the patients. And some of them, I think, are, are probably causing some of their symptoms. Every patient has a different collection of mutations, and so it could account easily for all of the varied uh, symptoms that patients are experiencing. Uh, there is a tendency to want to uh, group these into different uh, categories of disease. Uh, my suspicions are there are as many categories as there are patients, and therefore it's not a very useful thing to do. Uh, we will come out with a fairly large study soon from severely ill patients. And we have a large number of other patients that we're putting together. Uh, that's a, a family study where we look at patients and everybody in the family. Uh, many of these families we're looking at have multiple affected, but they also have healthy people. And comparing the healthy people in the family with the patients has been quite instructive. Uh, because they share a lot of genetics and they share the same environment and they share the same diet. So I, I'm hoping that that will uh, point us in the right direction. But we do believe that some sort of systemic uh, problem, probably at some central control circuit, and it's a matter of trying to find what is that central control circuit that, that's, uh, that's messed up in some way. We think there's something going on that locks the patients into this, and they can't get out of it. So if we can figure out what that control circuit is, uh, we may have a strategy to unlock it. That's our major effort at the moment, it, uh, because that would possibly mean that we don't need to develop a drug. Uh, there, may, uh, there may be ways to manipulate 
that central circuit to get people out of the disease. Uh, we have one primary circuit that we're looking at at the moment. Uh, we should figure out whether that's right by the end of the summer. The end of this summer. So, so what would your advice be to a room full of healthcare professionals here in Boston? What would you tell them as, as they potentially work with patients who, who may have the disease? I think right now what the healthcare professional should do is treat symptoms and listen to the patients. Uh, you have to listen clearly to the patients. The, the patients don't all have the same symptoms. And you need to look at each patient and what their symptoms are and try to come up with your own strategy that may help treat that. There's a lot of drugs out there that can modulate these things. Um, and I hope that that will work.